Um, good afternoon, everybody. Um, thank you um, for um, inviting me um, to the conference this afternoon. I'm just going to tell you a, li a little bit about how I got here today and what my journey has meant to me and the people around me in my life. Um, so I hope you enjoy it and I'll take any questions that you may have at the end of it. And also my um, PA will take any questions as well. He, he always speaks to get, uh, get us out of not answering any questions. <laughs> and when I started um, the Sharing Knowledge course, which is a partners in policy making course in September 09, I was a very, in a very different place as I find myself now. I was just about to come home almost for various reasons. I didn't exist. I was invisible. And can I just have a show of hands who have heard of partners in policy making before? And if you haven't, I'll explain. And for those who haven't heard of partners in policy making before, um, Partners in Policy Making is a national leadership course for parents mm -hmm. and adults with um, disabilities to learn together on how to work with the local authority and uh, play, playing level field rather than um, uh, not working together and making it difficult. Um, so that's what Partners in Policy Making is. Um, for those local authorities who haven't heard of partners in policy making, um, we can give you um, some details and how to get in contact with them later on. As a youngster, I felt restricted. My mum was well allowed to do more things than my, me. My mum used to say, you have a disability. And as parents, I'm not that parent myself, but as parents, we have our children up in cotton wool but, um, because it's the most safest place for us to put them in. But as a, as a, pair, as a person with a disability and as on the receiving end of a parent of a child with a disability and working with many parents up and down the country, you want your children up in cotton wool anyway, but you give your child that extra they are comfortable because they have a disability. Wayne and Thomas were allowed to do more things than me. I, I felt that I couldn't do it. I was very isolated at home, but when I, but when my mum let me go to the shops when I was thirteen, the bit of the, the cotton wool was on flapping. So when I was 13, I thought to myself, I could take this a little bit further now. <laughs> so as a 13-year-old, I asked my mum if I could go to the shop. And so suddenly my mum said, you won't know what you were doing, you wouldn't know how to um, go anywhere, but she did. I went to the shop. Um, so I thought, so after I went to the post office, I thought I could take this a little bit further, so I asked if I could go to town. <laughs> and suddenly she said no, because I wouldn't know what I was doing, doing or where I was going. Through my school um, life, I went to special head through high school and final school. So when I was in, yeah, well, then my teacher said we are going to do some independent travelling with you. We are going to put you on a bus with some teachers at first. So you feel able to, so you feel comfortable and able to do it yourself. When I told my mum, she was climbing the walls with me. <laughs> and she literally was because I knew this, because I knew this months that I was going to do this, but only told my mum two days before. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so she was literally climbing the wall. But I went into town with one of my friends and gradually I went to school on the school bus but came home 
on public transport <laughs> at the end of the day. And my mum felt comfortable with it. She knew that I knew where I was going. And after I left college, I went into, into town and um, um, went to college. Sorry, after I left school. Then went to college and she felt comfortable and happy that I was doing it. Life after college, uh, through college, I joined an agency called Berry EST, Employment Support and Training. My first placement was at Matter, and I didn't like Matter. <laughs> I was folding jumpers, I was working in the men's department, folding yeah. jumpers, yeah. which is entirely impossible for me to do, with my condition. <laughs> <laughs> it is entirely impossible. And I was putting um, the boxes in order in the men's department. And every time when they fall over again, I would just me, I would call myself Boxerman because this is all <laughs> I was seen to be doing every day. My second placement was at Ethel Austin's, still working in the men's department, <laughs> still folding jumpers. <laughs> but I also worked in the start room putting clothes onto, onto hangers. This, um, at the stage in my life, didn't work for me to have a um, support and employment agency and to support me, but um, it's not to say it didn't, it wouldn't work for anybody else. My interest was actually in the media, because I wanted to work in the media um, when I left college, um, but I find myself doing what I do now, I, li I like what, what I do now. But at the time, I felt my life was going nowhere, um, as I said, my mum and dad was always my 24 hour carer. We didn't, we didn't have any connections with the local authority. Mm. We didn't have a social worker to help us when I was younger. So I was with my mum 24 7. So we was arguing and falling out. But this is when my life really started to change for the better. Debbie, um, at the time, um, he was at one of my advocates at that time. Debbie is one of my auntie's good friends. She said to the niece, the sharing knowledge course was available in September and I could go on it. This is when my life really started to, to change for the better. Debbie has a son with Pong that sneers herself. She understands what it's like. Sue Harris, I met Sue in August 2009 and I remember when I met Sue, I met her in the office because Debbie worked for a, bit, um, um, a parent partnership at the time, now he runs a parent foreman. But um, I met Sue in the office and she asked what I was doing and what I wasn't doing. So I explained that I, all the things about and um, being very EST and not doing anything, sitting at home watching Jeremy Carr, as we said at that time. <laughs> Still do, but not that much. <laughs> the PAs might say something different. Um, and what I wasn't doing, and she said, why I, uh, why I wasn't on a national board for people with a disability are doing um, talks what I'm doing today. Um, and then Sue really stepped forward to become my advocate, citizen's advocate. She got the ball rolling for me to get my personal individual budget where I've got now. She helped me got um, my own home, which is on an ordinary suite. It's a flat. And she helped facilitate my path, planning alternatives with tomorrow's book which I'll explain what that is in a couple of seconds. And I say she helped me get my PA, and which I moved in to my own place four years ago on February 
in February and at that time begun helping me get work. And we always say without Sue and Debbie, I wouldn't be here today doing what I do now. And um, my path, this is my first path. Um, planning alternative with with some old hope. Has anybody heard of it before? Yes. Yeah, I know you. Um, um, planning alternatives with tomorrow hope was um, designed by three people. It was designed by a guy called John O'Brien in America, Jack Pierpoint and his wife Marsh Marsh Forrest. They wanted to help their friend who lived in an institution at the time called. Um, he's very famous in America now. He's very famous in Canada now, but she. Um, they doubt the institution, they wanted to see what she liked. So planning alternatives, part of the short, how it works. Um, you start with the Greens and Affirmations, which is the North Star at the end there. And you start asking the young person what their Greens and Affirmations, what they wanted to do for the future. So things came out, out like what I wanted to do. I wanted to go bowling. I wanted to go to the cinema. I wanted um, my own job. I wanted my personal assistance. I wanted two cars, one for winter and one for summer. <laughs> I only have got the one car. I wanted to do what an ordinary 21 year old does at that time. I wanted to go to New York, which is a place that I really wanted to go to visit on a holiday. So we started working back at that. And we go to the practical and possible. And we see what's that <coughs> practical at that time for a young person to do that. Then we start to involve members of my family to do, do that. So that when we started uh, doing the path, we asked who's there, who did we write to the path? So we started doing more members of my family to do that to help me to go and to go bowling, to go and to get furniture for my home, which I was beginning to move in. And my auntie, one of my aunties really saw what path can do, and she got, she seen what it could do, and she took me shopping for my furniture from my home and my auntie and uncle, which is my um, uncle's wife, where we took a back seat in my um, life when I was a youngster, but where it set forward to do, um, get the furniture from my home. And since then, we have kept in touch. I now have a better relationship with my cousins. My auntie Jackie does checks my finances to make sure that I've got enough money so they stay built me that I have and I, I always get the phone call when that happens. <laughs> but now on the, that side of things we now decided to kind of help my PAs to kind of take over that just a little bit so I'll be up on the phone so they, I trust them to going to check and see have my bills been paid, have I got enough money to stably live. You may be thinking to yourselves, yes, I am a person who can communicate by speech, but this is actually worked for people who can't communicate by speech, like uh, for an example, um, for people who are, who are about autism, who might just their families might be there because they know them than the best people to know them and then they might just come in and walk in the in and out of the room to see what's going on and it has happened. My work, as I said, I am a self advocate. I work to make changes to people's lives who live with disability. I sometimes work for a Bella Parent Partnership, my wife facilitates the 
built awareness querying to parents and self-advocates in schools. I also work with the self-direct support team and Berry and other services around the complete raising awareness.